Chesapeake Lifecraft was started in about 1991 by Chris Kolchitsky in his basement. I've also known the people. The plans business selling plans for kayaks. Chris uh, wrote for magazines and had some books. And uh, the availability of plans led to requests for boat kits. And, uh, Chris was still in his basement, so he subcontracted the manufacture of kits to the boat building firm where I worked, as it happens. Uh, so I was one of his first kit builders. The business grew very quickly in the 90s with the craze for kayaks. And, uh, so we, we uh, started a larger shop in Annapolis, Maryland. And, uh, I was one of the first employees there. Eventually bought Chris out in 1999. We always thought we should do a dinghy, so in 2000 I designed the Eastport Pram, uh, which was the distillation of uh, all of my complaints about dinghies for uh, for 20 years and uh, and it did really well we probably sold seven or eight hundred of them which is pretty good for a boat like that but the, the universal complaint was that it was very cute and all but it's much too small so uh, you know only for two adults so wouldn't it be nice if we did a larger tender and I sat on that for a long time, too busy with kayaks, among other things, and uh, uh, eventually Bill Parlator at Passage Maker Magazine uh, came around and said, uh, you know, uh, we have all these million dollar uh, trawlers and things, but uh, and, and the inflatable tenders are, don't look so nice on the, on the backs of these boats. Uh, would there be such a thing as a hard tender? You know, uh, pram dinghy of some sort that would complement the look of these uh, nice trawlers. And I said, oh, I'd be only too delighted to draw such a thing. He wasn't interested at all in sailing, but I was, and I thought that as long as I was making a nice hull like that, wouldn't it be fun to kind of turbocharge it with a sailing rig, uh, which, is, which is what I did. I, it, the, the, the way the length turned out, it was about the same proportions as a mirror dinghy, so I thought, well, we could make it uh, rigged like a mirror dinghy, which is known to sail well. So, um, in the event, it, it, it did become a very nice tinder, and a lot of people have bought them that way, but um, to my surprise, putting a, 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 a highly efficient sailing rig on it has made it really hot. Um, people are buying them just as, a, as they say. The, the, the boat is sometimes described as a Norwegian pram, and I guess it has a little bit of Norwegian in it, Scandinavian influence. It's lap strake after all. And it has a long, uh, fairly long overhanging bow that looks, uh, that looks Norwegian, and certainly the Norwegians of all people would approve. Uh, and boats like that were used in Scandinavia as recreational sailing craft, and even racing dinghies. Uh, pram bow, sloop rigged boats with very similar proportions. So, um, I had uh, gotten Frank Rosenau's book, Sailing Craft, when I was in high school, and um, he has these elegiac recollections of sailing uh, pram dinghies in, in uh, Sweden, and um, it always made a big impression on me. So I think that's why I thought it would make a good sailing book. Uh, you know, computers make it easier, but they, they make it easier to make drawings. They don't make it easier to design good boats. And, uh, uh, there's always a lot of fooling around. Uh, it's helpful to sketch things out. Computers are terrible, among other things, at uh, maintaining proportions. It's easy to draw something on a computer screen that, that looks right on the screen, but when built is huge or too small or, uh, or at, from certain angles looks gawky. And, uh, so you, you've, got to, uh, you've got to think of the computer as just a tool like a table saw. Uh, it just helpful, but not much more. I'd just as soon have drawn it with pen and ink. Uh, they came out in uh, May of 2005. I think we really started shipping kits for it in June or July. And, uh, about 40% of them have been the take-apart version. Uh, I've got, I got photos as early as August of finished boats. Uh, of 2005, so there, there were a number built in, although uh, they've been coming in thick and fast. Uh, not everybody's found your website yet. So, uh, I've been a member of a lot of One Design uh, sailing classes over the years, and uh, 
uh, have been have been in, uh, involved with with the the operation of, of one design classes and the only thing I can say about those is, uh, is that you never can tell when a critical mass will, will appear suddenly to form a, a sailing class and uh, stranger things have happened um, I know there that more passage maker dinghies were ship last year than a lot of famous successful one design class boats so um, it sure would be fun the boat sails well enough that uh, that you know, skilled sailors would get a kick out of uh, beating these around a triangular course sometimes. But, you know, that was just a happy accident uh, suggested by a customer, not by me. And uh, I, uh, I took the time to, to, to actually uh, fit a, a, a passage maker rig in a scary, and it worked really well. So uh, I basically endorsed the process. So, as I understand it, someone's launched and sailed one. It says it works well. There are also a couple of passage makers under construction with lug rigs, two of them that I know of, uh, and that has worked fine. And uh, I'll look forward to a performance report as far as I know structurally. Um, at Okumi Fest in 2005, I sailed around, and in the light to moderate airs, the passage maker was a little bit faster. Uh, just on the, you know, all horsepower, I guess, you know, uh, 78 square feet of sail versus 50 to 6, you know, horsepower wins every time, so I think once the wind came up, it would be, um, uh, it'd be a more interesting race, uh, it's scary having a longer water line, being very easily pulled. Thank you.